We are here in a... Feet. Turn left. In 300 feet, you will arrive at rental car return, Logan Airport. Then turn left. She spoiled the surprise. <laughs> We're here in Boston, about to go back to Logan Airport. Because we're heading back to Teixeira tonight. And as soon as we get there, it's like boom, boom, boom. Like we're just going to be... Working and getting the boat in the water. Preparing to leave, go to the water. This guy's staring at me. It's just fine. talking to a camera. Uh, <laughs> but he can't see the camera. <laughs> no, he can't see the camera. It just looks like I'm talking to nothing. We have one week to get everything ready, the boat in the water, and we're going to set sail to Porto, Portugal. So it's an 800 mile run, and our planned route is about 12 to 1500 miles. And we'll explain why yes. uh, in, a, in another time. But the yes. point is, we're really, really excited. We're going back out in the ocean. It's we're been getting like back 10 in the water. Months. I know it's oh. been way too long. So, uh, yeah, we just need to get there to the boat. <laughs> like, I see this so. little sliver of, like, Aaron's eyes. Okay, we just uh, entered the boat, and we have good news and bad news. Um, yeah. No mold. The good news is no mold. The bad news is bugs. So many bugs. But dead bugs, most of them. They're, they're, it's really, really distressing and gross. <laughs> And the bugs are inside. Outside, we have something else. The unfortunate condition of the boat when we arrived back in the Azores was especially distressing because we had the pleasure of welcoming my cousin and her two friends from college onto the boat to stay with us for a whole week. Luckily, however, they were incredible sports about the whole thing and helped us immensely to clean up the disgusting bugs and the crazy amounts of pigeon poop that graced us upon our arrival. The bird crap is a problem and it's leaving and we're gonna take care of it. I like the idea of having your boat as personalized as possible. And sorry about the generator in the background, but it's necessary. And um, so when we were back in the US, I painted these little tiles and they are going to work perfectly as our backsplash for our new galley. So Herbie's gonna get those installed later today and I'm really excited to see how it turns out. A very Terceran tradition, it, specific to this island, is bull fighting, and they call it bull fighting, but they don't actually hurt the bulls. The bulls just get some moments to do whatever they want, and the people, they like to taunt them with like umbrellas and such, and um, it's just a very festive, lively, cultural event.
This is our first time using our oven. It's very exciting. And we're using it for a good purpose. We're cooking blood sausage. And now we wait for an unknown amount of time because I've never done this. <laughs> in a chair across from me but your mind is in the sky above the trees just floating so lonely i took um these guys to on a hike and we experienced some of the more natural beauty of the island um and then Herbie got some stuff done. He got our bottom paint and we're all ready to paint the bottom tomorrow. So now we're headed to dinner at this delicious place. It was very important that we got El Catra while, while these guys are here because it's kind of the, the very, the staple dish of the island and it's delicious. So we're taking them to our favorite place to get that. It just dawned on me that you guys have no idea who these lovely people are behind me. Um, <laughs> the middle one, this one, that one, that's Anna. She's my cousin. <laughs> and the other two are her friends from, from college. And that's Aaron. And that's Tomasz. And he's from Poland. <laughs> so that's exciting. You know, that's it's all exciting. We're having a great time. And just show me Do you remember when we met? We were such a flaming wreck the fire never died when our bodies would collide in the night <laughs> Today we're going to be painting the whole bottom and we're also going to paint up to where the old bottom paint was. So when we had the top sides repainted, I had them paint lower than the actual top sides. That way the bottom paint then comes up over it. Just so that whatever happens, we don't end up short. I'd rather have top sides underwater than a gap. Now that's all well and good. We have the top sides all painted. We're going to put the bottom paint on. But where, where's our water line? Like that, that mark is gone because when he sanded everything, that went away. So before it got sanded, I measured, and we're nine centimeters, because here everything's metrics to so just go with the system. So we're nine centimeters from where the cut-in waterline is to the top of the bootstripe. And I do the bootstripe and bottom paint, because since we're a cruising boat, we're overloaded. So we sit lower in the water. Nine centimeters, that sounds easy, except that the hull has curves to it. So it's nine centimeters from the water line, from the water level up to the top of the bootstripe, which means in the bow where it flares and the stern where it flares a lot, nine centimeters is a different number. So what you want to do is actually hang the, the tape measure as a plumb and then follow along with the cut in water line to see where exactly it's going to go. So you just mark everything with pencil and then put your masking tape on. Now with the masking tape, you want to make sure that it looks level because that is your chance to correct things. Anything that's not straight or kind of wavy, fix it. Then you take some sanding blocks and you go. And you sand everything. You want to scuff it up nice and scuffy. That way it's, it's got tooth to it. That way the bottom paint will adhere to it.
our painting bottom. So you might be wondering why we're doing red. So no, red is not gonna be the final color of our hall. We're gonna stay blue. But if we just put blue paint over blue paint, you don't know when we're sanding and cleaning and all, you can't really tell exactly how far through our paint we are. So the idea is I put on a different color, and by me, I mean them, <laughs> they put a different color of paint under the blue paint that we're gonna apply. So then as we're cleaning the bottom and stuff and diving on it, when we start seeing red, we know it's getting time for new paint. All right, we are now taking a break from the boat painting because that was a ton of work for them. And I'm taking a break from changing our packing lines. And we're here at Squish. This is cold. This is cold. <laughs> Finally going back into the water. Yeah. It's pretty surreal. Like we've been out of the water for almost a year.
We've done it. We're in the water. We're in a slip. We're normal sailing people again, and it feels so good. And now we're going to go get lunch. They really go back far. Oh my god. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I got really good energy from the cows. Oh. <laughs> Today has been such a good big day. We went back into the water, which just it feels so right and amazing to have wisdom back in the water after 10 months of being on the hard and going through a refit and all of our travels back and forth from here to Baltimore and back. It's just been a whirlwind and we are so ready to move on. We love the Azores. We can definitely call Tercera our home right now. I mean, easily. We've been here for so long and we're so familiar with it. It's beautiful and we love it. It'll always have a place in our heart, but we're really ready to move on. And in a couple days, we're going to do just that. So tomorrow we're going to be provisioning for our next leg of our journey. And I just can't explain how excited we are. This is just the way it's supposed to be. Wisdom is supposed to be in the water, not out on the hard on jack stands. Uh, so we're just elated. And to celebrate, we're gonna get a special dinner at one of our favorite restaurants here. And then tomorrow we say goodbye to my cousin. So everything is winding down and we're on our way out. As I sit here, you're probably wondering, how did I get here? I mean, we're sitting in a tiny island. really hard to ready the boat for its next adventure. The stand is our staysail. His cotter pin was completely gone. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. And if you'd like to follow our journey in real time on a map, receive postcards from our ports of call, and message us directly to the boat, you can go ahead and become a patron using the link in the description down below.